launch is set to launch in just a couple weeks, so we thought it might be a good idea to get you all prepared for the game's chaotic battles by putting together a rundown of the game's heroes broken down by archetype. In our second of four guides, we'll be looking at the game's defense characters. First off is Junkrat. Like the demo man, Junkrat excels at area denial by using his frag grenade launcher to sow chaos through the enemy team's ranks. It's incredibly hard to make a coordinated push while trying to weave around Junkrat's bouncy bombs. Keep in mind that bombs fired by the frag launcher will explode on their third bounce, so take advantage of those extra bounces to hit things outside of your line of sight. The indirect fire of Junkrat's bombs make them particularly great for taking out siege up bastions without taking return fire. However, you're likely to have a tough time if there's a Pharah on the enemy team. Nailing an airborne Pharah with a bomb isn't easy. Junkrat can also place a concussion mine down that he can manually detonate to blow up unsuspecting foes, or use for mobility by jumping over his own mine and blowing himself up. Don't worry, he can't harm himself by doing this. Concussion mine actually pairs really well with Junkrat's next ability, the Steel Trap. Foes that trigger Junkrat's Steel Trap take damage over time and find themselves immobilized for the duration. But who's got time for that? Place a mine down with a trap and detonate it as soon as you learn that an enemy has triggered it. As you might imagine, your launcher isn't so hot in close quarters combat, so toss your trap at the opponent's feet, throw a bomb on top, and blow them away. Finally, you got Junkrat's ultimate, Rip Tire. Once activated, Junkrat unleashes a motorized tire bomb that can manually guide towards his enemies for a deadly surprise. Junkrat remains vulnerable wherever he is while he's channeling his ultimate, so keep that in mind before you let a rip. You'll have 10 seconds to hit your target before the bomb will explode on its own, and it can be taken out by the enemy fire if your foes see it coming. Another thing to keep in mind is that the rip tire can go up walls, including maze ice wall, and jump over obstacles, so look for creative ways to approach your targets. Up next is Mei. Mei is one of Mike's favorite characters in Overwatch. So it's unfortunate that her frustrating to play against Kit already has people comparing her to League of Legends' satanic Yordle Teemo. Still, a well-played Mei can win games on both offense and defense, even if she isn't a reliable pick in competitive play. So mastering her kit is definitely worthwhile. To start, Mei's primary weapon is two functions. Her left click sprays out a slowing stream of frost that will eventually freeze her foes after a short while. Mei's right click fires an icicle that deals considerable damage and can be fired at range. As you might imagine, freezing your enemies and then firing a couple of these icicles into their face to finish them off is really your one-two combo with Mei. But you also want to work on firing icicles at range for some surprisingly decent harassment, especially against Widowmaker, Hanzo, and some of the lighter heroes. Now, Mei's Cryo Freeze ability will really frustrate enemies trying to kill you. Using Cryo Freeze, Mei can encase herself in an impenetrable block of ice for a few seconds. While in that block of ice, she slowly heals herself up to full health. Now, Mike's used this mid combat to give himself a life advantage in protected fights, and many times to dodge all sorts of enemies' ultimates. It's very versatile, and it's very frustrating when you're not Mei and you're trying to kill a Mei that does that. Mei can also form a fairly gigantic ice wall that can be effectively used in many different ways. Put up an ice wall in front of an enemy bastion, Widowmaker, or Torbjorn's turret to block them from shooting at your team. You can block enemy players from leaving their spawn points at the start of the match, divide attacking forces away from their teammates, or even trap fleeing enemies from escaping. Now for May's ultimate, Blizzard, she'll toss her drone into an area, which will then begin to spin out a stream of frost, slowly freezing anyone caught in its radius. This is a great tool for capturing points or making clutch game-winning plays. It's even more effective if you can combo it with other players' ultimates, particularly Zara's for the wombo combo, but it works well on its own if you launch it at the right time. At the end of the day, May is a cold-hearted bitch that cares about nobody but herself, Seriously, one of the most annoying heroes to fight against, but one of the best heroes to have on your team if you have someone who knows how to play her. Next up is Torbjorn. Now, Torbjorn is your TF2 engineer for the most part. He's got a rivet gun that can be fired at medium-ish range for an okay amount of damage, but he's far more lethal with his charge shots in close range. He's also got a hammer that he can use as a weapon, don't bother, but is primarily used to repair and upgrade his turret. Torbjorn can have one turret out at a time, and he can upgrade the turret from level 1 to 2 by smacking it a couple of times with his hammer. There is a level 3 upgrade for his turret, but it's only temporarily active while he's using his ultimate. 
like the TF2 Engineer, you'll want to place your turret somewhere with a clear shot on enemies that come into its range, while also near something defensible so your enemies don't just give you before it takes them out. Effective use of Torbjorn's turrets rely heavily on map knowledge, so it's something you'll learn over time as you play the game. Torbjorn also has some team utility in his ability to generate armor packs that allies can pick up to boost their defenses. Armor packs require scrap, and scrap is left behind when players, both ally or enemy, die. A good Torbjorn will find time to venture away from his turret and collect scrap so he can keep his allies armored up. Torbjorn's ultimate, Molten Core, is really just a huge buff for the little guy. Molten Core will give Torbjorn a massive amount of armor as well as a serious boost to his repair and fire rates. Additionally, Molten Core will temporarily upgrade a level 2 turret to a level 3, making it particularly nasty for the duration of his ultimate. There isn't a whole lot to say when it comes to Molten Core usage. Try and save it for clutch moments when you or your team are really under pressure. Unlike Torbjorn, Bastion is the turret. Bastion's a pretty straightforward character. In Recon Walking Mode, Bastion has access to a fairly weak SMG that works okay for defending himself in a pinch. Think Soldier 76, but a little bit less damage. Ideally though, you want to be doing most of your combat in Sentry Turret Mode. In this mode, Bastion can fire his Gatling Gun and really lock down an area, especially if he's supported by his group. Get a Mercy buffing and healing him, and a Reinhardt shielding him, and you've got an extremely tough nut to crack that will murder your whole team for trying. Granted, Bastion takes double damage from behind while in sentry mode, and he's got an exposed core behind him that serves as his headshot location, which is a prime target for flanking characters such as Tracer or Reaper. It's best to find a location against a wall to reduce your chances of someone sneaking up behind you or taking you out. If you do take a huge spike of damage, you can use his ability self-repair for a channeled self-heal, but you'll want to try and get yourself out of harm's way first before you begin channeling it. Now Bastion's ultimate transforms him into a treaded tank with a massive cannon which fires explosive shells. There's not a whole lot of nuance to it. Roll around, shoot enemies, profit. Despite his simple and straightforward effectiveness, Bastion has a couple of key weaknesses players should keep an eye out for. As we've noted earlier, he's exceptionally vulnerable to flanking attacks from characters. Again, Tracer and particularly Reaper who can just teleport behind him and take him out. Other characters such as Junkrat can put a lot of pressure on him by lobbing grenades at him out of line of sight. Another character you'll want to watch out for is Genji. If Genji goes into his deflect stance and do not shoot him, he will reflect all of your bullets back at you and kill you instantly. Hanzo is one of the two snipers available in Overwatch. Though of the two, he is the hardest to master by far. Hanzo's weapon, the bow or storm bow, can be charged up for more damage and these types of shots will make up for the bulk of your damage as they can be absolutely devastating if you land a headshot. Unlike Widowmaker's bullets, the distance Hanzo's arrows will fly are determined by how long you charge the shot and they also travel in an arc, so he requires a bit more practice to get his aiming down. Now make sure you use Hanzo's wall climb passive to scale up walls, just hold jump, in order to get yourself up to an optimal perch. Hanzo can also fire a sonic arrow into an area which grants visibility of all targets in its radius for a short while. It's not as strong as Widowmaker's infrared sight, but it's also available more often. Sonic arrows also do damage and will stick to their targets, so it's a great idea to hit some targets with it in order to keep tabs on their movements if you don't think you'll be able to take them out. Another aspect of Hanzo that will require a good deal of practice is the use of his Scattershot ability. Scattershot allows Hanzo to fire an arrow that fragments and ricochets off of surfaces. It won't fragment if you hit a target directly, so you'll always want to aim for a surface of some sort. Scattershot has the highest damage potential in small rooms or tight corridors, so be on the lookout for opportunities in these areas. Now, Hanzo's ultimate, Dragon Strike, can be challenging to use effectively, but not nearly as much of the rest of his kit. Dragon Strike fires an arrow that transforms it into a gigantic spear dragon that will take out anything in its path as it flies through the map in the aim direction. This arrow can be fired through walls, and the dragon itself can pass through any object or barrier in the game. Dragon Strike is an exceptional tool for getting the enemy to scatter off of a control point or payload, but it can also snag you some monster kills if you can set it up to surprise your enemies, i.e. flanking or getting them from the side. Most players will expect an enemy Hanzo to shoot out a Dragon Strike head on into a coordinated push, but if you manage to find a flanking angle, particularly through a wall, or catch an enemy team off guard and take them all out before they can properly react, it's GG. Next up is Widowmaker. 
Widowmaker is significantly more straightforward than Hanzo, so if you enjoy sniping but want something a bit easier, your best bet is Widow. Not exactly easy, but still more straightforward. You're not going to have an arc to your shots. Your shots are going to be more direct, unlike Hanzo, which you have to account for. Now, Widowmaker's rifle has two modes, Assault and Sniper. In Assault mode, Widowmaker fires fully automatic, but this is really only a good idea in close range, or when you're kiting the target away from you. In Sniper mode, your rifle charges up a short period to maximum power and resets between shots. You'll want to let it charge to full on most targets, but you can fire at lower charges to finish off an enemy player if you're confident that you got enough damage to do it at the current charge level. Widowmaker's primary form of mobility is her grappling hook. She can't scale up walls like Hanzo, but she can quickly find herself in a perch almost anywhere on the map or escape from a sticky situation via her use of her hook. Now, Venom Mines work similar to Junkrat's Concussive Mine, except that they are triggered by proximity and deal damage over time poison gas, instead of burst damage up front. Use Venom Mines primarily to guard your flank when sniping. It's easy to get tunnel vision while you're scoped in, so if you properly set up your mine, you can use it as a means to alert yourself of an incoming flank, since the game will let you know that it's been triggered. Like Junkrat, you can also toss it down in close combat to help your odds of coming out on top. Widowmaker's Ultimate, Infrared Sight, grants vision of all enemy players to the team for its duration. If you're doing a good job sniping, Infra Sight should be available fairly often. So be sure to take advantage of it during just about any significant team fight. As a sniper, your biggest worries are the flanking offensive characters, Genji, Reaper, Tracer, and Winston. So, which defensive characters are you looking forward to playing at launch? Please share your thoughts with us and give us some tips if you have any. We would love any comments that you have below. Please feel free to voice your opinions on this video. Again, this was written by Mike and narrated by myself, Ripper X. We are both huge Overwatch players and we're very excited for release. As always, stay tuned to MMORPG.com. We definitely have more Overwatch content and videos coming soon.